Hi everyone, welcome to episode number 64 of the Bill Podcast and in this episode we'll be going through Redis which is an in-memory data structure storage. So as usual, some terminologies. Uh, in-memory database, I just took this off from the Wikipedia. It basically relies on the main memory or the computer data storage as opposed to disk storage mechanism. Quickly, a few of the relevant websites. So there is redis.io, which is really, really clear cut website. It comes with the commands, the clients, the documentation. I highly recommend to go through this uh, Redis website. And of course, there is also the source code, which uh, resides in GitHub. Do go through the source code as well. It is almost entirely written in C programming language and uh, Part of the code that I really liked was the manifesto because it also talks a little bit about the technology behind Redis. For example, a DSL for abstract data type or a memory storage, how important it is to the philosophy of developing Redis. And there is, of course, the documentation. I really like the first part of the documentation, which also outlines how else we can use Redis. For example, pipelining or publish and subscribing method or Lua scripting. So these are really a bunch of handy scripts or links to various websites. There is, of course, a Stack Overflow question which is what is redis and what do i use for a very important question what where do i use redis so i found the answer uh, really useful as well so go through it and uh, there is also a little website that kind of mocks the command line for redis and goes through the various commands and the useful uh, tips on redis so go to try.redis.io some of them we will be going through this episode as well and of course there is redis.io slash command this is where you will have all the commands related to redis so it is really really comprehensive so go go ahead and check it out so let's go to the command line and uh, I'm right here in my desktop. So in order to install Redis uh, according to your operating system, if you're on Mac OS, you can just do a brew Redis install with Homebrew Package Manager. And I've already done that. So if you do a Redis dash CLI, which is the command line interface, and then dash V for the version. So currently we are using 2.8.19. Redis also comes with the Redis server, which you will need to start so that you can manipulate the data and uh, go through the commands. And it is simply Redis server. So once you click it, there you go, you will have the Redis server starting. It will say at which port and at which version. So I'll open a new tab. And uh, over there, if I go to Redis-CLI, it will basically come with the CLI. Inside the Redis CLI, we will try out some of the common commands and how we can basically manipulate, create, set, get data. So the very first thing is let's try to get all the keys. So in order to do that, we'll just type in keys and asterisk to say get all the keys. So obviously, initially, we are all empty. So why don't we try to set one? So here is uh, we are trying to create a very basic key value pair. So let's do a set and call my key as simply my key and then my value as just my value. All right. And then how do we get it? We just say get and then my key. And there you go. You will have my value there. So now if you do keys and then asterisk, you will see that the value is displayed here. Then if you do keys and asterisks, you will see that the key is displayed here. If you want to clear away all the stored value, you will simply have to do flush DB. And then if you do a keys and asterisks, it will come back to empty list. Why don't we try to set another kind of key value pair? In this case, we will do set and travel colon destination will be our key. And in this case, the value will be simply Sydney because I want to visit Sydney. And then if we do keys asterisk, notice that the key value colon destination is displayed. So what if we want to delete this particular 
key and not just everything with flush db so in this case we'll simply do del and then travel colon destination and then if you do keys asterisk obviously everything will be empty now if you want to clear away your screen you can simply type clear just like a linux command line next let's try to set a key and interestingly we will also set an expiry time so let's set the key as my key and then the value is 100 and we will ex uh, set an expiry time as 20 seconds all right so i'll try to quickly do it as we get through the steps before 20 seconds expires so go and then time to live and if we query that my key, you'll see that it is 15 seconds. That means 15 seconds is already gone, 12 seconds. And if you do get my key, well, it's still available. What is TTL? It is six, get my key, still available. TTL is two and get my key, guess what? It is not available. So this might be a useful expiry detail uh, to implement if you want some keys to be just living for a while and then just uh, expire. So let me clear the command line once again. Next we will go through some integers and this is really useful for some kind of counter. So the syntax is very similar. So we have set and then the key name and then the value. In this case, it will be one. If you just wanna increment the counter by one, you just do INCR increment it by one. And then of course, if you do get counter, you will get two. And if you do it a few times, you'll see that it will just increment. Similarly, decrement is also DECR and then counter, up, up, and then you're back to one. So now if you do keys and asterisks, you will notice that you will have counter. Another useful thing about Redis is this thing called list. So let me clear the screen away and let's create a list. So in order to create a list, we will do a left push. So L push and call my list as simply my list. And then let's try to insert the very first element, which is Apple. Now, if you want to get the list and the elements inside it, in this uh, case, the command will be L range and then the list name. In this case, it is my list and then the starting index and the ending index. In this case, it is just zero and zero because Apple is the only element we have in the list. Why don't we try to push in another one? Now notice where the object will be inserted. It will be from the left hand side. So now if I do L range zero, zero, it will be banana. So if you want to get the entire list, we have to start from zero and end at one because we have two elements in the list and there you see apple and banana. So clearly if you kind of laid out horizontally banana comma apple, and if you kind of visualize that L push is basically coming in from the left. So now if you want to do a right push, it will coming in uh, from the right. So why don't we try to do that? So oops, red is CLI clear. And uh, once again, notice that it is persisting. So if I do a L range, my list, it is still there. So this time we'll do a R push my list and uh, let's have it as coconut. And if I do L range, let's do it from zero to two because there are three elements inside. So notice that coconut is appended from the right. And similarly, it will be interesting to do a pop command. So L pop my list will give you something from the left hand side, which is banana here. There you go. And if you do R pop and my list, it will come from the right hand side, which is coconut. And of course, if I do a L range my list zero zero, it will only give you apple. Well, two, not really. There's only one left here. So be sure to check out other list commands here. So if you just search for list, it will be there. And there are other ones like L set or L index, L insert and so on and so forth. Let's also go through another type of data, which is the hash. So why don't we try to set a hash? So M H M set, and then let's call it itinerary. 
and let's say the itinerary is a thousandth one and let's try to set one by one so destination in this case why don't we set it as New Zealand and how about duration maybe 20 days type of uh, the travel it will be nature hiking so now if I want to get all the hash values inside so we can do a H get all and then itinerary and simply the name and there you see the destination New Zealand all the values are inside but if you want to get a specific one in this case the command will be simply H get but you will have to provide the key why don't we try it with the destination it is New Zealand what about duration it is 20 days and similarly just like the list you can also check out more of the hash commands in Redis and it's pretty self-explanatory I really do love the documentation of Redis it's very very clear lastly we'll do something called the publish and subscribing so here I will open two Redis CLI so for one I will just do a subscription and let me open another one Redis dash CLI and here I will do the publishing so for subscription the command is simply subscribe and then I will kind of name the channels I want to subscribe to so maybe I have two channels to subscribe hi and history I have a spelling mistake so subscribe and yep it is just waiting so I'll just enter a little bit and in the other CLI I will basically try to publish so in this case why don't I publish and let me give the channel name hi and yep it is already listening to hi and why don't I call it bonjour and that is the command that I will be sending over the channel hi so notice what happened when in in the subscription the message comes up and the channel is hi the message is bonjour why don't I this time call it as ni hao and once again you see the message coming from the hi channel and what if I want to publish it in the history channel so let's call it history and in this case I'll call it Unix and there you see in the channel history there is Unix so pub sub model can be also very useful if you have some messaging or chat system but uh, let's get on to code using uh, Redis as part of a programming language because obviously we will not be coming into a command line and do this so in this case we'll be using JavaScript so let me see the inside the folder Redis here it is completely empty except for one file which is the git ignore and the git ignore simply is ignoring the node modules folder so why don't I install the redis node module which in this case is simply redis I will also create a file index.js and inside index.js we will simply do a get and a set so why don't we first uh, create the redis variable first so redis equals to require redis and let's create the client and after this why don't we try to set a value similarly what we did in the command line but this time we will do it with code so client.set hello and then we will simply say bonjour and then redis.print to kind of say the status we will also do uh, client.quit so that uh, it kind of exits right so we'll simply do node index.js and reply is okay so now if we go to a redis dash cli and if we try to get all the keys and there you see you have a hello and why don't we try to get hello it is actually the same thing that we set right here so the next thing we will do is get it so in this case I will simply do a ni hao and I will set it to high something different and I will also get it this time so client.get so in this case there will be a callback function and the first argument uh, as usual in the node pattern it will be an error and then it will be reply and why don't we just console log the reply and after it console logs we will just quit it 
sorry we should probably just do a high here and uh, let's try to execute it so simply node index.js yeah it is console logging it and redis dash cli and when i try to get all the keys notice that a high is created and when i try to get high it is nihao so one thing to note about redis clients is that the clients are available in many 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 programming language the one i covered is just node.js but there is one in python or php perl c bash so go ahead and explore the clients and implement it in the language of your choice finally i wanted to go through some links related to redis which might come in handy and one of them is the cheat sheet by redis but of course uh, for documentation i tend to just go to the documentation itself finally as usual in the last part of every episode i tend to give a build link of the episode and in this episode i wanted to say 24 ways as we end 2015 uh, for 24 days every year, 24 ways comes up with a bunch of blog posts every day. So have a root, read through it. They go through like Git or your code or JavaScript security. Some really, really fun and learning articles on 24ways.org. And that's it for this short episode of Bill Podcast. I've been away for almost a year, but it's really, really great to be back. And I'll see you next year. Goodbye.